Let's go to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Second year in a row, I think uh, a lot of teams, or a lot of people like the Steelers. Number one on the composite grades and an A plus from PFF. Two years in a row, A plus, I believe. Lowest grade from the 20 or so sources was a B. So the Steelers, this not only was it uh, players that people liked, but it felt like a uh, just a culture draft, you know, the, the themed draft. I like themed draft, Sam. When you get a tackle, Troy Fautanu in the first, a center, Zach Frazier in the second, then a guard, Mason McCormick in the fourth. I think they have three potential starters on the offensive line. McCormick doesn't have a path to the field yet, but I think eventually he'll be a starter. Then you get wide receiver Roman Wilson, which again felt like a steal in round three when yeah. people are talking about him going in the second. And then Peyton Wilson, the linebacker out of NC State, who's had 11 to 15 surgeries since high school and falls to pick 97, but is a first-round caliber linebacker. So I think those are the types of moves. When you get Roman Wilson where you do, Peyton Wilson where they get him, and then the three offensive linemen in their first five picks, you add that all up, and that gives you all the feels the next day after the draft's done. Yeah, no, it's a good draft. I think they've they've got they've hit everything um, extremely well. Like Peyton Wilson feels like a steal because of the talent, but is actually given that injury history, it's a fair spot to draft him. You know, like he goes in the sort of Jermaine Burton world. Uh, and that makes sense just for a different reason. It's not, it's not on the field. As, not as important as Jermaine Burden. No, because he's a linebacker, not a wide receiver. Right. Uh, but it's all the it's the injuries and the fact that apparently he doesn't have an ACL in one leg, which feels problematic. But anyway, yeah, this is a great draft. Um, Troy Fautanu at number 20, good value, position of need, makes sense. Zach Frazier, as you said, on the offensive line at center, should, could start right away. And then Mason McCormick, uh, a death piece who probably has a, a way of getting his, himself into the lineup in the future as well. Roman Wilson, the Peyton Wilson, the Wilsons, uh, two third round picks. You get a guy that was, I mean, coming right out of the senior bowl. Peyton, uh, Roman Wilson had had such a good senior bowl that people were talking about him as the guy that could sneak into the first round. Um, now, you've heard that about half a dozen wide receivers, right? Because it was such a ridiculously loaded class. But anyway, the point being, at, at one stage, he was seen as a fringe first-round, early second-round guy to get him in the third as a steal. And then Peyton Wilson, arguably the best linebacker in this class on the field, he's just had multiple knee shoulder surgeries and hasn't got an ACL in one leg. So, you know, if you think you can get him on the field and keep him healthy, it's an absolute steal. Even if you can't, it's worth the gamble in the third round. Yeah, I have to say, like, the, the multi-year view on the Steelers, we, we loved their draft last year, loved their draft this year, and the only question <coughs> is going to be the quarterback position. Yeah. Because I think I also love the process at the quarterback position. It, I just don't know if it'll pan out, right? I mean, they, they went and said, okay, we're, we're paying almost nothing for Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Which, given the fact that the starting point, again, it's all relative to the starting point, even a couple years ago with Omar Khan, was Ben Roethlisberger's retiring. They took a shot on a Kenny Pickett. They moved on from Kenny Pickett and then spent almost nothing on Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. Process-wise, I think it's fine. I have no idea if they found a good quarterback yet, given Russell Wilson, his age, the way he's played the last couple of years, and Justin Fields, the fact that he's underwhelmed his three years in the league. The way to get there, though, and to do it on the cheap... I think was wise and now because they've done that on the cheap they've been able to build the rest of the roster i think the steelers went to free agency a little bit more than they have in the past and then this draft in particular again i think i'm i mean i might be lower on the actual players fautanu i think is fine he's a solid player i think i'm a little bit lower on frazier than uh, than maybe some others but i think frazier is a really good fit for what the steelers want to do as far as running downhill Fautano, I think, is going to get a chance to step right in at left tackle. His movement skills are incredible, and I think he's got a chance to take over for Dan Moore right away at left tackle. And I absolutely love Mason McCormick, the guard. I think he's another great Steelers fit, absolutely buried people in, in the FCS at South Dakota State, and one of the guys that I put in my quote-unquote upside article for interior offensive linemen, he has the workout numbers for guys who have historically – become really good NFL players relative to their college production. So the offensive line picks, I think, um, are going to be solid and work out. And I was a Roman Wilson fan as well, getting him at pick 84. We talked about this deep wide receiver class. Uh, Roman Wilson, if he went in the second, I wouldn't have batted an eye and they get him in round three.
Yeah, I mean, he should be the second receiver in this offense after George Pickens. Um, I also I think really he's a like, pretty good proxy for Deontay Johnson. And yeah, replace it. right, in terms of yeah, what, what they're losing. Um, it's also, I like the process of, okay, the, the quarterback thing is sort of its own world. If you, if you don't have a shot at a high-end quarterback, this is a good approach. Signing Russell Wilson for pennies on the dollar because Denver's picking up his tab, and then Justin Fields as a, as a gamble, as a reclamation project, like that's, that's good. Um, I also think if you're if you're bringing in Russell Wilson in particular, the best thing you could do to help his chances of success is really try and bolster that offensive line, right? Let's try and make that thing an absolute brick wall in front of him. So you already brought in Broderick Jones a year ago, uh, James Daniels, Isaac Sayamalo. Those guys are relatively new on this offensive line as well. Now let's go and try and upgrade the other two spots as well. Troy Fautano at left tackle. Now Dan Moore doesn't have to do it going up against Miles Garrett twice a year, and then Zach Frazier to challenge Nate Herbig at center. Like, if they're able to really move that offensive line forward, that gives Russell Wilson his best chance of success. It also gives Justin Fields his best chance of success if Fields ever has to come on, and, and they give him a shot. You know, if they uh, cut bait on the Russell Wilson thing at midseason and Justin Fields gets half a year to show he can be the future. So even just in terms of where they've allocated the resources – three offensive linemen in a draft of what seven two four six yeah seven picks is a smart place to do it I think I do think it's funny that the two teams that have traded for Russell Wilson immediately invested in the offensive line yeah now that was also after years of people begging the Seahawks to invest better right. on the offensive line um, by the way it hasn't necessarily worked but as soon as Russell Wilson got traded for by the Broncos they signed Mike McGlinchey in free agency to play right tackle they signed Ben Powers to play guard and we probably had the same exact conversation. <laughs> Good job investing in the O-line to help Russell Wilson. We'll see how this one plays out here. But, yeah, second straight year. Um, I think Omar Khan's done a really good job. I just wanted to speak to the, the nature of the, the GM job and how so much of it just comes down to getting the quarterback right. And that's probably unfair. It's part of the job. It is what it is. But if you were evaluating Omar Khan and the job that he's done over the last couple of years with the Steelers, I think overall it's been it's been really good. I think they've drafted well, had good process, sprinkled in free agents the right way. Now it's just a matter of are they rejuvenating Russell Wilson? Are they developing Justin Fields? Because we might be sitting here a year from now asking, okay, are the Steelers drafting a first-round quarterback right now? They've got a good team. They've got a good infrastructure, but they have, they have to get quarterback right. But um, everything around the quarterback, I think, is, is just continuing to get better in Pittsburgh. Absolutely. Do you have any more use for the Steelers? No. Oh, I, I forgot to check their uh, their undrafted hall. Oh, yeah. Get to the undrafted. I didn't do that for the— By uh, the way, old friend Kev Cole has done his own his own rankings for the draft. Oh, which yeah? Which look nothing like anyone else. I right? wouldn't have thought so. Obviously. Because um, he's using surplus value relative to the pick and consensus board and a whole thing. And a contrarian disposition. <laughs> and a contrarian disposition. Um. He's got the Patriots as the best draft. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just saying. Cool.